Hello again, it's Elizabeth and I'm here in my art loft and I wanted to talk to you about what you do with your leftover pieces of gel prints because we always have those. You either have torn one up to make it into a collage or you've cut one up to make it into a journal or whatever and sometimes you'll have little bitty scraps that are little skinny skinny lines or sometimes you'll have fat little scraps that are uh, actual you know like a piece of paper so if you have one this size you can always trim that down and pick out the best part of it and make a two and a half by three and a half inch card and then that's called a artist trading card you can put something on the other side of it or additional collage on the front of it or whatever you like on that aspect or you can trim it down so that it fits into a book like the one that I have here, which is a, a structure that's by Heidi Kyle, Hetty Kyle, sorry Hetty, and uh, this one has silkscreen uh, print on the outside, a seriograph, and um, then it has paste paper on the inside covers, and then each of the pages it is a fan fold book, as you can see. Each of the pages actually turns around 360 degrees. So you could start with it here, you can turn it to here, and then you can turn it on around to here. So this could appear, you know, at the beginning or the end. And that works because of the way that it's cut. And you can look up Hetty Kyle's version. Hetty Kyle's version has a diagonal cut up here, and as such, it won't, well, it might turn all the way around to that. I'm not sure if it does or not, to tell you the truth. But I like the straight cut so that it's straight here and straight here so that it frames my little picture, whatever I put in there, a little better. And you can see that that's actually not cut perfectly straight there, but that's life. And I put some of my little butterflies that were from a few of my gel prints left over from a few of my gel prints into this. You don't really even have to turn it all the way around because of course we can flip it from one side to the other. And this can be displayed and it's called, I think it's called a gallery book or something like that. Uh, it looks like a gallery because of course your pictures are nicely framed and then there then you can sit it up and have both sides visible at the same time all right push through there it just catches because that's a thick kind of a cardstock okay I will show how to make this book at a later time but right now I want to show you is that the way I have it oh well we'll go with it that way yep with those out there I think I had it the other way well I can fix that later it's no problem Okay, another thing that you can do with your uh, gel print leftovers, if you have little skinny strips, you can make them into a weaving. I mean, you can do lots of things with them. I mean, you can make a little frames out of them for your, your uh, journals or your books or whatever, or even for a frame for photographs. But I use some to make into a long um, plaited, piece of paper which I can then later put in my uh, journal as a belly band or I can use it as a pocket or I can simply put it in as an attachment so that I can look at all the different pieces of paper that I've done and maybe get an idea of color combinations that I might want in the future. I think that uh, it's a, a nice way of keeping track. I mean, you could start from the beginning in the first gel print you ever made, you know, make a line here and make it a calendar, I mean, even if you wanted to. But uh, it's still, it comes out as a pretty decorative piece of paper that you have here and uh, lots of fun to build as well. And all those leftover pieces you can use for that and they work really well. The other thing that you can make is you can make paper beads, and I've been doing that a lot lately. And you can make paper beads that are skinny and long. And this one has uh, the gold ends on them, which I 
uh, do by dipping it into the gold paint that I have. And it also has fingernail polish on this one. So you can make it skinny and long. You can make it short and fat. And you can actually make it fatter than this one, but I chose this size. I like this nice oval size. This one does not have fingernail polish, and you can see the difference in those two because the you know this one has a little bit of dull the the turquoise is not a shiny paint although i use a lot of metallics in my uh jelly prints so therefore i wouldn't have a lot that had uh no shine to them at all then you can also make them um oops come back here you can make them kind of squish to one end so that you have kind of an oblong bead so that it's kind of uh, thinner at the top than it is at the bottom. You can see how that one has kind of a, you know, oval shape, but it has, it, it's like weighted to the bottom rather than just being an even one like this little guy is. And here is a good illustration of the difference in the uh, fingernail polish one and the one that doesn't have it. From what I understand, you can buy a fingernail polish that has sparklies in it, so you could ha add another dimension with uh, glitter. I don't actually wear fingernail polish, so I bought this specifically to do my beads, and it did not have glitter. But I could put glitter in it. I haven't decided if I want to do that or not, though. But you can see those are virtually the same bead, except one is polished and the other one is not. So this one's just a little... A little more dull than the other one. Okay, to make a paper bead, you may already know how to do this. A lot of people do. And let's put those in that corral so they don't get over, get all over the place. These, I think, these are particularly pretty ones. They had a lot of uh, gold on them, and I think that they ended up looking almost like cloisonne. I mean, if you look at them really close, they have a are you focusing? Maybe there? Can you focus that close? Yeah, I don't think so. But there's a lot of gold on there, and in between the gold, there's little tiny bits of color, and it makes it look like a cloisonne type thing, at least to me. Okay, so if we take a piece of paper... And if we had one this long, then um, the fattest bead that I've made is this fat, and it is half of one of these sheets. Now, that is because this paper is thick paper. It's a 100-pound finch fine, and finch fine is a, it's a thick kind of paper. So you can see how kind of, it's like cardstock on, in your scrapbooking terms. So, um, therefore, it's, it's thicker than you would have for just a, a normal you know, if you used a piece of, um, say, a seed catalog, that's what some of my friends use for theirs, um, a magazine probably would not be as thick paper as this is. So if you have this thick paper, then I, to get this size bead, I use just, uh, <clears throat> I use just one half of it. But if we want to try that, we can go ahead and try and see what we get if we use the full length of it. Now I'm just gonna randomly cut this and you could cut it with your, you know, with your ruler right there so that you would get a nice even straight cut on it. I usually round my ends just so that the end doesn't show as one little pokey bit or one little squared off bit. For this paper, it is so thick, I go ahead and, um, first of all, I, I square off this a little bit so it's square to this edge because then you don't have that annoying little bit of paper that sticks up out of the end of your bead and I don't have any ones to show you because I, I didn't make that that kind this time okay so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to adjust this just slightly so that you can see what I'm doing here I'm going to take this at the edge of my desk and since it's thick paper, I'm hold, putting my palm there, and I'm just rolling it down over the edge of my desk. And you see that curls it, so it pre-curls it and makes it easier, makes it easier to curl around my skewer. Now my skewer I have, I had a store-bought skewer, and I'm going to go ahead and do the other side of this too. It doesn't take but a minute. There. Okay. So I had a store-bought skewer. Let's bring you back up here so you can see what I'm doing. 
and this is the size of a store-bought skewer and a store-bought skewer is about one eighth of an inch thick well some of my friends said oh I don't like the hole that big so I said okay well I'll fix my skewer so I whittled it down with my exacto knife down to about a sixteenth of an inch. It's actually a little bigger than a sixteenth of an inch, but we're not. We're going to pretend it's a sixteenth of an inch thick. You can do this around a needle. You can do this around your uh, awl. You can do it around an ice pick. You can do it around whatever you choose, just so the size of your uh, skewer or whatever you're using to roll it around is the size that you want the hole to be because this is you know the hole is going to be the size of this thing you want to hold it tight as you go around there and you want to be aware of each end as to if it's shifting to one end or the other you can kind of push it just a smidge to make it go down to the other end again sometimes if if you let go of it it's going to just squirrel away from you and you'll have to start all over but it as you go, you can just roll it around and you will get the bead built up. Now, the longer the strip, the fatter the bead. The height of the strip determines how long the bead, how tall the bead will be, or, you know, like, yeah, how tall the bead will be. So in this case, it's going to be a kind of a fat little bead. And all I do, and some people go through and put a little glue as they go. Some people glue like two or three times as they go, just in case they would, they were to let go of it. Um, the one other thing I want to mention is that if you use a wooden skewer, it kind of holds on to that piece of paper. Whereas if you use a metal something, like a metal uh, a needle or a, an ice pick or whatever that would be metal that you would use, it does not hold on to it. So you have a little bit harder time uh, rolling that around there and having that stay uh, as you're going. I mean, it makes it a little bit harder. And I just put a little bit of glue at the end, which if my glue will come out there. And wipe that off a little bit so that it's whooshed down in there. And then I roll it till it's closed. Adjusting that if needed to its center point, centering it. Wipe off any excess glue. Close your glue bottle, of course, because you don't want that to get... Come on, you don't want to get it stuck in its spout. And then I usually take it and kind of roll it, get the glue off my fingers. And then I kind of roll it on the table to make sure that that's securely pushed against that, you know, the, the one thing is securely glued to the other. And you can see that this did not make that much bigger bead. I mean, it's about one and a half times this bead. And the reason that that is the case, even though it was twice as long as this bead was to start with, the reason it's only one and a half times around, uh, wide you know, the width of the bead, is because this one, each time it goes around, is going around a bigger piece. So it's taking up more of your uh, paper as you go. So therefore, it's not increasing by, it, it wouldn't be twice as wide as this bead because it has to go around the circumference of this one. And the circumference each time that you go around it gets larger. So that's what a bead out of this paper looks like. We'll go ahead and roll that other one just to see if it looks the same. Again, what I do is to cut off this, this a little bit to begin with to give it a flat beginning. So in other words, square with your, my tail down here. And this tail isn't square either, so I'm going to do that. So I cut that off square so that when I put it on my uh, skewer, it doesn't try to immediately roll to one end. Okay. Again, I use the edge of the table, and I'm not going to show you that. I'm just going to do it to curl it, pre-curl it a little bit, because that, that breaks the fibers from being just so rigid that they don't want to bend, so it gives them a little bit, a little bit of curl to them to start with. Okay, then I push it really close around there, and I make sure that my first turn, I don't know if you can see that, but I make sure that my first turn, make sure it's really close there. And then when I keep continue to roll, I want to make sure that I watch and uh, make that come out 
kind of even this way and this way so that each of my rolls are kind of even there. Okay, so I did that. Okay, so it's skewing down to that end, so I'm going to push it to this end just a little bit. Now I need to go back down to the other end. It just does that way. Okay, and you can see, I don't know if you can actually see that, but you can see as I'm doing it, I can see each layer as it's going on top of the other layer, how far it overlaps or doesn't overlap the other layer, how much of the other layer is showing. When you have one like this that has these little orange things in the middle, then you'll have like a little orange stripe around here, which will be kind of cool. have to get it in the center again. Sometimes they don't want to stay there. And if you have your strip evenly cut, you will have mostly an even uh, shoulder to your bead. If you have your strip cut straight in one place and then curved and cut straight in another place, you can have kind, you can develop how you want your bead to look. It may not be just an oval type bead. It might have a step here and up to another step and so on. So you can experiment with that and come up with the type of bead that you want to have as your bead. This one's turning out pretty, isn't it? With all that orange and all the orange. Uh... Oh, don't let go, don't let go. And I did, did I let go? No, it's still securely on there. It's just the last bit that I let go. So I have to make sure that that's stuck. And I forgot to round that one off, so let's round it a little bit and put some glue on it. And then close that up. Close up my glue bottle. And then roll it a little bit to make sure that it's securely against there. If you didn't want that extra blue that it happened on mine, you could cut it off previous to where that blue would appear so that you wouldn't be having seeing that. Um, other than that, it's perfectly good bead. Now, you could put your fingernail polish on it while you have it here on your skewer. Or you can wait until after you take it off and maybe use a toothpick or something else to hold it and do that. I think that's pretty. So these two beads were made out of a similar piece of paper. But you can see they kind of turned out a little bit different. This one has like more blunt ends than this one does. So this one's a tad bit longer. That's because when I trimmed my edges to make them uh, square with the paper, I kind of uh, made a longer... Uh, bit of it on that one than I did on the first one. Okay, so the other thing I do to make them pretty is I take my gold, my Extreme Sheen Gold, I put a little bit out on my desk. Like just a little tiny bit. Let's get you down there. Come on. Oh, and it always comes out more than you want. And that's, that's all I need for two beads, that's all. And then I dip my bead end in it. Now this makes a little, I like it because it looks like a little, you know, end to your bead. It gives it a kind of uh, an edge. But it closes up the hole, so to open the hole again, I just simply blow through the bead. And then the bead hole is open again. So then I dip the other end in. And I hold my hand there just in case it will blow out, but it doesn't really because it catches on the inside of the bead. And there you have it. I just lay it down and let it dry so that both those ends are dry. And then I will probably, I don't know if I'll put fingernail polish on that or not. It looks shiny enough as it is. That's because of all the gold paint on the actual gel print that I did. Okay, if you have questions, comments, or want to like this video, I'd be happy for you to do so. I'm glad you took the time to watch. And have a great day. Bye.